I want to just talk about a little bit of uh, um, uh, weapons and stuff like that here. I want to talk about this sword first. This sword, it all and it tattered and stuff like that, and I, I don't even know if I wanted to get it refurbished. I don't even know if I want to get it refurbished. But this is older than us. This sword. If I try to take this sword with me when, I, when I'm going to Japan, they will seize it. They will seize it. Because they're trying to get back all the swords that they made come from Japan. That's not like those swords that we win, which is more like a decorative kind of thing we do for kata. This is a real, this is a real sword. This sword is for, this is a killing machine. When you draw this on your cut, it's ikenasatsu. This is, this, this is designed to kill. This is designed to kill. <laughs> right. And this is more of a, this is more of a, a cutting sword. You know how some swords is a piercing sword, you know? And you'll know the piercing sword because they have a groove. They have a groove around it. So when you stab somebody, air comes in. Air goes in and kill them, right? So this sword is, this sword was, this one is mostly for cutting and slicing and all that kinds of stuff. But you can pierce with it too. You can pierce, but if you pierce, you'll have to turn for the air to go in. You know, pierce and you go like this. You, you can't just pierce and pull back out the other one. You know, because have the, the groove you pay, pay a sip in. And one of the reasons for the, 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 the grooves too is that, like if I, if, if you use this and you pierce somebody, your muscle will grab this. So to pull it back out, the muscle will lock on it. Whereas the other one with the groove, you go in and come back out easy because of the grooves. So the air will bring it back out. Whereas your muscle gonna spasm and grab this one. So this one, when we have our museum and stuff, it's going to be there, it'll have a nice show for it and security and stuff like that. This one is just a little one. One is a katana, one is a wakazashi. You have this short one. Miyamoto Masashi was a great sword. He used to fight, he's the first guy to start fighting with two swords, one in the left, one in the right, you know, and stuff. But this one is short for close up. This one is for close fighting, close up fighting, and one is for long range and stuff. And so this one here, the same thing is as old as this, that one, um, it have real gold, real gold. Um, inside of here, and um, well, you know, it loses all some of the parts and all that kind of stuff. But in here, it have a warrior on a horse. And sometimes when two guys going to square off the fight, and one guy would look at the other guy's sword, and he would look, or the suba, this is called a suba. And if you look at the suba and like have a monogram on it, then he wouldn't want to fight that other guy again. Because so you see, those guys have the sword and they're positioning themselves and they, 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 they're kind of watching to see if the guy looking to see if he's one of my guys. And if it's one guy, they see they might bow and back off and go their way, but you don't know what happened. So boy, we're going to see a good fight. That's two good guys, but they can't fight again because both of them have the same sword. They're from the same organization. So they're not going to kill one another. Like how we don't know, we have the same patch, we're trying to kill one another because we don't understand that the same patch means we ain't supposed to hurt each other, we're supposed to help each other. This year, this year, in, you know, martial arts really was started in Africa and India and those places. And so this year, the African weapon, this, this year, termites don't deal with this. This, this, this is something else. And this year, this, this will crush your skull, crush your ribs. And, and, and once you know, you know this is, you, you, people train with it to strengthen their hand and, you know, all the jabbing and all the different techniques and stuff like that, you know, and so on. So they, you know, do learn to, you know, like we use weights and thing now, but they use this to strengthen your hand, you know, and to do all the exercise and also to, you know, to fight. Yeah? Okay, so this is, a, this, this is some, with, in Japan they would have the, the, um, the tonfa, so you have this. This one is also an African fighting weapon, martial arts, and they would, they would wear it in the, you know, in the side like this here, and depends on how, if they're gonna make the throw, right, they would here, they would wear it, pull it this way, and then if, it's a, if, if they, they have it another way, like here, you know, they will pull it down, or they'll have this part up here, right, so if they have here, pull up here, if the other way, they'll pull it downwards, so sometimes it come this way to make your fight and move with this way, right, it depends. Now, a lot of these martial art weapons and stuff was made of a certain type of material, certain type of wood that if students get sick and they get wounded and stuff like that, these same weapons, they would put it to soak, to soak in water and it will have the, 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 the healing properties, like how we would soak um, bark or leaves or grains or something and drink the water. Weapons used to also 
have the same thing to kind of keep you going as an antidote until you get help, right? So your weapon was also your healing food. These here is more Eskrima. Is This is like Philippine fighting art. And so these are the Eskrima sticks and stuff, right? And so, so they learn to fight with these and with knives and, and all that. And, you know, a lot of times you all see we, we do some demonstration with the Eskrima. But these guys are the Filipinos. They, uh, they used to defend. The warriors used to defend with just two sticks. And they had some different knives, about 24 different types of knives. Some could hook, some could cut, some stabbing, some you know, for throwing different things, right? But this is also um, uh, a screamer um, weapon. This is short, I travel with this. Most of the time, this, go to, this thing makes the rungs around the world because I could travel with this. And this is something that you could use to break a glass. If something happened even in your car, if you had it and you get trapped and you could the door lock and you had to break the glass, you could use this to chip the glass to come out because your hand would get cut, you know, so this would help you to break a window to get in or to get out. Or some, I'm not telling you to be no bandit, I'm just simply telling you right what this is for, right? But it's a fighting weapon. This, this other one here is a musical instrument, you know, a musical instrument, but it is a sword, right? So while you could play, um, it's a flute, but it's a sword. And people used to carry these and they never know, nobody never knew that they had a, you know, a sword in it because it just, it's just a flute. All right, and I demonstrated with this all over the world many years, but um, I can't travel with it anymore since after since 9 11, they restrict travel. So, everything that I have here, it has to stay here unless I can get a license to get it out and get it back in. This other one, this is a kobutan. This one, you can't cut it with a knife or something like that. Here, it could work like a nunchaku too, but come, come, tall man style, right? So, the, a guy could stab you and he stop here, right? Right, break your ribs with it. Right here, right, you cut off your hair, he'll wipe you out with this. You know, you just, you know, you're right across your face, he hit you with it, and stuff like that. He come behind your neck like this here, right, and here, and set you up, right, and take you out, like that here. Take you out like this here. Right, hit the face, in, up inside, in, right, here. Just move back and just crack your skull with it. Bang! Yeah? Push. Right. Many years in Purple Dragon, more than 40 years ago, when we have Black Belt class on a Sunday, we used to put some um, arrows inside of here and aim it at the black belt. And we used to go very slow because we, we never had an accident. And we used to pull and shoot at the black belt. We used to have to try and move and try to catch the arrows. And we don't do it anymore because uh, things change and all kinds of craziness now. But I still keep it. But this is older than a lot of you guys here. But this is we used to practice with this. And black belt used to have to learn to move and catch the arrow. If you need martial arts supplies, all you need is Black Belt. Black Belt. We're upstairs, Hadid Center Mall, on Henry Street in Port of Spain. We have gear for students training in karate, judo, akaidu, jiu-jitsu, and boxing. Check us for a wide selection of books on martial arts as well. Call us at 623-7203. Black Belt is open from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and open till 1 p.m. on Saturday. And yes, yes, we serve all the schools in the country. Hoo-yah! Do you fear for your life? Join Purple Dragon and learn deadly karate skills. We also offer classes in jiu-jitsu, self-defense, and kickboxing. With 20 locations nationwide, join us for aerobic and yoga classes as well. Contact us at 623-7203 or 680-4441. Find us on Facebook or visit our website, www.purple-dragon.com for more details. While our world headquarters is in Barataria, your safety is in your hands.